It's it's an under semantic yeah. I mean, it is the I think it's a on one. Okay, uh, should I wear it? Yes. Okay. Microphones. Okay. All right. So, so the second talk of the session is given by Professor Lenny Glassman from Yale. Uh, yeah, uh, good morning. Um, it's great to be here in person. We get another time. So, I'll talk about um, uh, Andre reflection uh, in uh, scanning. Spectroscopy. Uh, so it's again Andreev, and it's somewhat related to the previous talk, at least in terminology. Uh, I'll try to. Yeah, a bit uh, can do it. So um, here is the um, um, the outline I'll try to follow. So I'll first I'll motivate uh, this work, uh, and then I'll uh, it'll be a long introduction actually. Uh, so I'll discuss tunnel conductance and uh, how the um, uh, tunnel density of states is recovered from experiments uh, in my theorist understanding. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. Okay, just a second. Let me try to figure out how multiple pointer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. So and and then uh, I'll um, uh, discuss how to uh, go beyond a tunneling approximation uh, and to do the a non perturbative relation of conductance. Uh, and I'll mention three known paths. You'll see which paths uh, I mean, uh, which are well developed for wave superconductivity. Uh, and we'll see how to uh, generalize one of these ways uh, to um, uh, to look uh, at um, uh, beyond uh, the S wave. Uh, uh, now, then I'll just present the final analytical result, uh, and we'll discuss uh, what can be learned out of it in terms of symmetries uh, of the order parameter, how it affects the spectrum. Uh, from Victor Strong tunneling. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, experimental applications, not too much, and conclude. So, uh, as to motivation, uh, uh, the motivation is hunting for unusual uh, to this superconductivity and goes back uh, on my memory, on my memory, memory at least to HTC. Um, here are two uh, figures of the phase diagram uh, from two different reviews. One kind of artist like, another one is more STM like. Uh, the diagrams are similar, and we see that there is competition between phases. Uh, well, everything is controlled by competition between various kinds of correlations, uh, and uh, there are quasi insulating phases, uh, quasi or magnetic phases, and superconductivity. Uh, and this interplay actually um, leads uh, to uh, unusual. Uh, uh, Ways of pairs of pairing electrons uh, in the uh, superconducting state, uh, which some people know just well well know, um, and uh, there are um, uh, manifestations of uh, non-space superconductivity 
uh, in the wave uh, materials that go back to uh, wonderful Kirkley experiments uh, with uh, seeing um, uh, uh, a track flux or just uh, uh, the ground state flux uh, in a specially prepared ring of ITC and uh, to ARPES. So here is ARPES um, uh, examples. Uh, and basically, uh, in ARPIS, one can see that uh, the gap uh, in some direction uh, turns zero. Uh, so basically, uh, by now it's well established that uh, superconductivity, which basically lives in AB plane planes, um, uh, there is a, there are kind of four loops of D wave uh, structure with the parameter. Uh, it's to positive to negative, and there are some directions where uh, the gap. Is vanishing and that's what actually uh, this uh, graph uh, illustrates uh, it's back in mid 90s uh, now another way to um, uh, to uh, um, to see uh, the gap structure uh, is in stm actually in stm they were uh, two different directions uh, of studies, uh, what's so-called uh, quantum uh, uh, quasi-particle interference effects, which I will not discuss at all, uh, and just uh, more direct uh, or straightforward, I would say, uh, uh, way to look at it at at um, the properties of oops, sorry uh, of the um, uh, of the uh, of the spectrometer uh, just by uh, by spectroscopy. Um, so the principle of uh, STM is uh, shown uh, on this figure. So basically there is a needle, a tip that goes close to, uh, to the surface of the material. And actually by the uh, exponential virtue of the decay of the wave functions, the, uh, uh, the sensitivity of this instrument uh, is uh, much higher than the geometry may tell you uh, because basically the trajectories uh, uh, the in imaginary times trajectories of electrons that tunnel from a tip uh, into into the surface uh, basically form a very narrow cone and exponentially decay if you try to make this cone uh, wider. Uh, so uh, that actually leads to remarkable sensitivity uh, space-wise, but also one may just uh, park uh, this thing at uh, one point and uh, measure uh, IV characteristics uh, and and then. Uh, DIDV actually tells you about the nature uh, of the density of states, as we will see um, uh, in, uh, in the, at a given point. Uh, and here's an example. So uh, uh, actually, that's from Oyston Fisher et al. Uh, review article, and uh, this kind of things uh, is that what Oyston Fisher was doing for years. If one can look, for example, at a conventional superconductor uh, in magnetic field, and if one Parks steep um, at the core of the vortex, uh, then one sees uh, well, more or less uh, normal density of uh, normal IV characteristic, and concludes the density of states is constant. And if you go away, then it's BCS, and and there is a gap. Um, now, uh, uh, so here uh, is um, a kind of a um, various uh, cases. Uh, of superconductivity, starting actually, uh, I found uh, the graph uh, in uh, Giver's uh, Nobel lecture, uh, and uh, it is a nice graph in the sense that actually uh, it shows uh, DIDV normalized to the normal DIDV, uh, and there are numbers one, two, three, and so on. Uh, quite often, people use. Uh, something like arbitrary units, which actually uh, may, may be somewhat deceptive. Uh, but uh, what's important is that this is a conventional superconductor. Uh, it's uh, 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 led uh, uh, in contact with manganese uh, through an uh, uh, insulating barrier. Uh, and it's, there is a well-defined gap. Um, and um, uh, this is uh, niobium uh, also. Uh, very well defined gap. Uh, now, even in more exotic materials uh, like uh, boron carbide, which is actually antiferromagnetic, uh, still uh, S wave uh, superconductivity is alive and well. And as actually, the angle was telling yesterday, uh, antiferromagnetism is not 
so harmful because there is some still symmetry you can flip spins and shift. Uh, so it's not very surprising. Now, uh, in high TC, situation is different. Uh, and uh, there is um, uh, what is called pronounced V shape uh, of the DIDV. Uh, uh, now, uh, in some experiments, actually, this shape uh, goes way down uh, and uh, almost touches zero. Uh, so, this uh, color graph is from Jenny Huffman's lab, if I remember right. And uh, basically, uh, what she did, she measured uh, DIDV uh, at different points of a sample, and sample is inhomogeneous. So, uh, the curves are uh, different, or somewhat different, but the commonality is that it's V shape everywhere. Now, uh, actually, uh, this is uh, uh, BISCA 2201. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's a Fisher Maggio Aprili. Uh, uh, experiment, and um, it's again V shape, but it doesn't go to zero. And uh, I, I'm not sure if it's resolved. Why? Why is that or not? Uh, still, now again, samples may be homogeneous or inhomogeneous. Uh, this is uh, this is an example. Actually, this is my uh, of a very uniform yttrium um, uh, 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 one to three. Uh, and uh, it's remarkably uniform, and this V shape is more or less unchanged uh, uh, from point to point. So that uh, was uh, in uh, the times in the heydays of high TC. Uh, now, uh, what people also tried at that time uh, was looking uh, at what I would call strong tunneling uh, into cuprates. So one may uh, make a junction. At that time, it was mostly not STM junctions, but uh, just um, uh, sputtered or whatever uh, junctions, uh, uh, which uh, have uh, large conductance, uh, and the the area may be small or large. It's actually important because uh, what may matter is not just the conductance but the transmission coefficient of a barrier. And these are two different things uh, because conductance just scales uh, with the area of the junction, uh, whereas transmission coefficient is independent of the area, right? So you can get uh, the same value of conductance by small, making area smaller, but a transmission larger. Uh, and some quantities scale not linearly with transmission, but it's some, some higher powers and then it matters. So. Uh, Strong tunneling, I would mean, you know, it's, it's, it's large transmission coefficient rather than just uh, large conductance of the junction. Uh, so uh, if one tries to make a stronger contact uh, uh, into AB plane, so just kind of tunneling from the top, basically there is no clear effect uh, happening, uh, uh, happening if you increase the transmission coefficient. But uh, if one tunnels uh, into um, uh, the, uh, another phase, uh, especially into a B plane uh, zero zero um, uh, one one zero sorry one one zero, uh, then actually there is an effect, um, and um, that's uh, from the review of uh, Die Deutscher. Um, also, experiments were done in, in uh, mid nineties. Um, so as you see. Uh, for, uh, for for tunneling into in, into the side. So basically, if you have a B plane, it's tunneling in plane tunneling uh, across a line uh, which um, uh, has direction one one zero, uh, and that corresponds to tunneling uh, as shown uh, on this sketch in the direction that corresponds to uh, a nod nodal point. Uh, then um, uh, there there is a clear um, uh, zero bias peak. Uh, in uh, DIDV, again, it's normalized conductance, I apologize, but that's what experimentalists did. Uh, once again, so here's the geometry. Uh, and uh, as you see, um, this, this contact is uh, in a very uncomfortable di direction. Uh, the layers uh, go vertically and uh, one tunnels, uh, one has a contact uh, on the uh, kind of on the side. Uh, so that uh, was uh, with uh, uh, high uh, TC. Uh, now, 
uh, there is one more thing uh, which kind of goes together with the previous slide. Uh, and I actually I didn't know about this experiments before yesterday. So uh, one may try to uh, go with a tip uh, on a um, on a grain uh, of um, see In this case, it was YBCO, uh, and um, uh, so the grain is in natural direction. So uh, uh, the AV planes are horizontal, uh, but one may tunnel into the middle of the grain or at the edges. And uh, skipping details, uh, there are two very characteristic points uh, somewhere uh, far away from the from the uh, edges of the grain, and then it's uh, this proverbial V shape. And but why, once you tune uh, to a point that corresponds uh, to uh, uh, the one one zero phase, which is just a point here because uh, it's cut in well or it, it's indifferent. It's uh, along one zero zero and zero one zero directions, the real edges. So if you if you go to the corner, then voila, there is a peak. So that again goes together with the previous um, slide where um, the tunneling was done on purpose uh, into the side face uh, of the crystal. So now new stuff. Uh, so things uh, kind of. Um, uh, I would say there was a flashback and uh, this, this field exploded again uh, uh, with uh, TBG, twisted by layer graphene uh, discovery. Uh, and uh, I, I think this diagram is in memory of every person now. So basically, again, it looks like ATC and there is superconductivity and uh, correlated insulator, all kinds of phases. Uh, again, it's because of the narrow bands and strong interactions. Uh, and um, there are computing phases, uh, conjecture of pneumatic superconductivity. Uh, uh, there is experiment uh, and and some theory. So again, it's 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 a transport experiment. So um, uh, no tunneling. Uh, and, and again, the conclusions were uh, kind of cautious. Uh, there was no definite statement about you know nodal superconductivity, D wave. But the possibility of having something like uh, uh, D or P wave superconductivity. Uh, and um, conveniently, there is a theory, uh, which actually uh, it's a, one of the understandable papers, uh, uh, where um, just uh, having pairings that couple various one half singularity, uh, one half um, uh, settled points, uh, one can uh, develop. Um, uh, various scenarios for uh, getting to spectrum state, uh, and there are possibilities of having uh, the states which break spatial symmetry but keep uh, time reversal intact or break both uh, spatial and time reversal uh, symmetries. Uh, so, this A2, E1, and E2 are representations, um, uh, just uh, the, the one dimensional, two dimensional representation, uh, and two components of two dimensional representation of C3. Uh, group that characterizes um, uh, the actually these three groups that characterizes the material. Uh, so uh, now, uh, what about uh, tunneling? Once again, uh, uh, of course, people tried it. Uh, so now there are no layers; it's just single layer, right? So uh, no tunneling uh, into the plane, uh, at least. On purpose, right? So just from the top, uh, and uh, uh, on uh, TBG, um, there uh, is a recent work which actually prompted us to do this uh, uh, study uh, theoretically um, uh, that shows uh, this shape in the conventional regime of uh, weak tunneling. And actually, this is a good example. Uh, it it does tell the numbers, so. Uh, 30 nano Siemens, and I'll tell what nano Siemens is in a second. So this is, uh, and trust me, it's, it's a weak junction. It's, it's a very large resistance, uh, or if you remember what uh, nano Siemens is. Uh, now, uh, uh, in, in trial layer graphene, uh, there is a um, uh, work of uh, from Caltech. Uh, and they 
think of the possibility of having a, a transition of some kind uh, between uh, the uh, uh, nodeless uh, and uh, nodal gaps at differing feeding factors. It's all in, in whole doping between minus two, minus three, if I remember right, uh, as well as uh, the twisted bilayer. Uh, now, frankly, I'm not sure I understood the theory arguments in that paper about the transition, but uh, meanwhile, I learned about uh, an older work of uh, uh, Gurai Radzikovsky and Andreev, uh, which um, uh, do have a discussion, actually, that's about the uh, possible uh, uh, BCS, BC uh, transition flashback resonance. So basically, uh, my understanding is very simple that uh, you, you may, okay, so if, if you have almost three particles, you can construct by some interaction uh, a P wave or DR superconductor, which will be gap full uh, and uh, will not break the universal. But then if you increase the interaction, eventually uh, the two, two electrons must form a, some kind of a molecule. And there is some finite energy to to pull it apart. So basically, uh, there should be a gap uh, in a single particle spectrum. Although uh, at the macroscopic level, it's still Gisberg Landau, and you may have D wave order parameter. Um, and uh, that would correspond actually to D wave, but uh, it must be gap full um, uh, just because of these simple energy considerations. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, again, a way to understand, in my view, uh, what um, uh, these people see and, uh, and tell. Um, now, yep, yep. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's an uh, excellent question. It's a perfect segue to what I'll do later. So jumping ahead, uh, uh, it's because of Andrea reflection. So uh, the thing is that uh, Andrea reflection, uh, as I understand it, it's a two electron tunneling. There's nothing is reflected. It's just two electrons a tunnel in a single quantum act. Okay, so you take one electron tunnel through the barrier. It sits in virtual state, wait for a counterpart. Uh, another one comes and they form a Cooper pair, right? So it's, it's like one coherent act in which you tunnel two particles. So you have a product of tunneling amplitudes. And this is still an amplitude of a process. Okay, now you have to, to calculate conductance. You have to square the amplitude and it gives amplitude to the force power, right? So that's the difference, uh, and that's why actually you don't uh, the the Andreev conductance uh, doesn't scale the same way as uh, single particle conductance, right? So that's 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 why uh, this normalization to uh, just normal conductance uh, may be deceptive, because you can make a transmission coefficient very small and increase the size of the barrier and have the same conductance, but you'll completely kill Andreev. Uh, by making transmission small. Does, does it answer? Okay, thanks. Um, okay, uh, so now uh, going uh, further about numbers. Uh, so thanks for this question again. Uh, so, the, uh, um, so the unit transmission for kind of a point contact where there is just one channel, one dimensional channel, if you wish, for electrons uh, corresponds to conductance, uh, which is uh, around 80 times 10 to minus four micro Siemens. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and tunneling, I assume, is a point contact, especially on the scale of more a pattern. Uh, so, uh, that's why uh, I would call uh, certain nano Siemens a weak junction. Uh, and uh, say 150 micro Siemens, uh, a, a strong junction where the conductance is close to uh, the, the quantum unit. 
So meaning the transmission is order of one. Okay, so this is the difference between weak and strong, right? Uh, and again, in this respect, STM is kind of simple because it, it really it's a point contact. So basically, um, uh, the I mean the contact is smaller than the Fermi wavelengths. Electrons kind of zip through the uh, through some very small fold. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's what exactly what I'm telling now. That uh, I, I assume that. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. So the question was: that, Do I assume that there is a single channel uh, in the tip? Now, again, what what is channel? Uh, you may imagine for a second uh, a, a contact of some area, and measure area in its, uh, of the Fermi wavelengths. Okay. So that would be the number of channels. And uh, yes, I assume uh, that uh, the STM tip uh, is a single channel uh, contact with transmission between zero and one. Okay, how good is this assumption? Uh, it's a bit of a question. Uh, I, I th personally think that in the case of uh, uh, graphene, uh, of TBG, especially of TBG, where the Fermi wavelength is tiny uh, in the material. Uh, I think it's a reasonable assumption. Uh, as long as the contact is less than the size of the moiré in itself. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. This is true. Uh, nevertheless, the, the the point of the tip there may be in some special cases maybe not a single channel because of the symmetry of the atom that sticks out uh, right yeah but but tip is very sharp and actually again look i mean one should talk to experimenters but they also kind of dip the tip into some into something and then take it out to make it sharper uh, so as far as i understand uh it it's a usually it's a reasonable assumption but it's a good question, and we'll see that actually the assumption leads us into a ditch uh, in this particular case. So, uh, so um, yeah. So this is the um, uh, this is a strong uh, tunneling uh, data, uh, and um, again, uh, what um, I, I guess we thought incorrectly, but uh, probably, but. What we took at face value, you know, that okay, it's interesting that uh, basically uh, in the same experiment to go from V shape uh, to a, a maximum uh, in the conductance uh, at uh, stronger tunneling, and how does it happen? Uh, kind of uh, defied our uh, imagination or uh, at least our understanding. So now, uh, uh, just a few words about the standard things. Uh, now, the, uh, the conventional uh, scanning uh, tunnel spectroscopy measurements uh, of uh, in the BCS, conventional BCS regime, uh, the, the standard way to do it is just to write tunnel Hamiltonian. Uh, so this is a tip three particles. Uh, this is to the materials that we explore, but suppose it's just BCS superconductor. And then uh, tunnel Hamiltonian uh, that uh, is um, uh, in the case of point like tunneling, uh, uh, has matrix elements that are products of the wave functions in the tip uh, and in the sample at the same point, at the same uh, point in, in plane, right? So R0. So there is uh, one parameter uh, in this Hamiltonian uh, and it's a model Hamiltonian. So this parameter uh, is uh, in the model, but uh, one should get rid of it at the end if you want to express absorbable in terms of absorbable. Uh, so then the standard things, uh, it's BCS uh, or Bogolubov representation of uh, Fermi, uh, uh, electron Fermi operators, uh, the uh, conventional represent, uh, expression for the, pre, uh, for the excitations in a superconductor uh, with the spectrum of excitations, which is conventional square root. And if it's not an S waves, then uh, delta depends on the direction on k vector uh, on the Fermi surface, uh, and uh, uh, one can just write the Fermi's golden rule. Uh, uh, now, 
uh, u sub k of r zero here is the as I said is a wave function of uh, electron in the uh, in the two d. So in principle, it's some block function at a given point r zero. Uh, and uh, then it's standard manipulation. Basically, one can uh, divide out uh, the uh, normal state uh, densities of states. And I, I'm sure that I screwed up the coefficient, but basically uh, uh, the normal conductance is proportional to the uh, to this model parameter uh, T mod squared uh, times the density of states, uh, uh, product of the density of states in the tip uh, and in the to, to D in the normal state, right? Uh, and as a result, uh, one has this wonderful formula that DIDV uh, in superconducting state uh, equals not proportional, but equals uh, to the normal conductance divided by the normal density of states uh, in the solid material uh, times uh, the uh, BCS density of states at energy uh, EV. Actually, at energy mod EV, uh, things are particle hole symmetric. Uh, and uh, uh, the maybe for some more uh, conventional formula is basically uh, the density of that JDV uh, is proportional to the uh, imaginary part of retarded green function. At a given point and given uh, energy. So uh, the important thing is that uh, in the two last uh, expressions, uh, the uh, model parameter is chased out, uh, and uh, the IDV is expressed in terms of the measurable quantity, which is normal conductance. Okay, so that's the essence of phenomenology: that you may have a model, but uh, better uh, express everything in the model in terms of things that can be. Uh, uh, that, uh, can, that can be accessed. Uh, so, uh, what do uh, one uh, do we have in case of uh, this lowest order tunneling? Uh, okay, DIDV is proportional to uh, the density of states in BCS, and if it's S wave, then there is a hard gap, so zero DIDV up to uh, the gap value, and then there is one half singularity, which is one over square root textbook thing. Another thing that is perhaps almost as well as textbook, textbook that in case of nodal superconductivity, a very simple analysis of the same uh, integral over momenta uh, gives you uh, mod EV behavior at small biases. This is the proverbial V shape and uh, a bit less known. So there is still one of singularities, but they are weaker. It's uh, log divergent uh, peaks. Okay. And again, it's very simple. I mean, it's similar to. Some formulas that Harris was showing yesterday in a more sophisticated setting. Pardon? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so, so thank you very much. 2D. I mean, <laughs> uh, in 3D, there are some, actually, even with STM, there are some more uh, difficult, not difficulties, but additional things. Because then the, the, there is some angular dependence. So let's discuss just 2D. Uh, yep. Uh, okay. So now, wait. Uh, so uh, now, uh, but what, uh, how to deal with, with arbitrary transmission, right? So I'll expose. Uh, uh, several uh, ways to go. Uh, they're all kind of beaten path, so it's it's uh, there is no any um, um, anything uh, unusual here. Uh, so the first path is uh, uh, what was done by Blunder, Tickle, and Klopwijk. It's it's a fam well, by now famous BTK paper uh, in 1982, uh, and basically, okay, what can we do? We can just do one-dimensional problem. One side normal metal, another side superconductor, BDG, Pagliot addition equations, a barrier, and just just barrel through, uh, uh, just uh, matching the wave functions, solve transmission uh, problem, and write current. Okay, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, was done. Uh, now, uh, the barrier that was chosen in this work was a delta function barrier. Uh, with the strength characterized by parameter Z. And that's in experimental papers, they love it, just everything in terms of Z. Uh, now, uh, one can find uh, DIDV, for example, analytically, it's not very difficult. For example, at EV less than delta, uh, one gets 
uh, this uh, kind of expression that depends, of course, on EV uh, and on Z. Uh, now, uh, they did everything. They just looked at various values of Z. But what is important, the experimentalists, what is important that uh, still uh, this Z is related, directly related to the normal conductance, uh, but in a very simple way. And it's it's very straightforward to re-express things so that Z vanishes and everything is expressed in terms of the observable uh, conductance, which actually enters in, in various places, including the denominator uh, of this expression, for example. Okay, so that was BTK 1D. Uh, now, uh, if uh, it, it uses what is called Andrea approximation, uh, and things work out only when delta over EF is small. Uh, now, if it's not small, then you can get anything and it will be uh, extremely model dependent because in this case, uh, basically even without a barrier, you have two media with different uh, refraction coefficients, so to speak. So you'll, you'll best get anyway. And if you don't believe me, you can look at the spotted paper and see what one may get uh, without, uh, if, you, uh, if you abandon the uh, uh, Andreev uh, approximation. Uh, so, so the the peak actually, uh, so this this peak is the one half singularity, and it fixed at delta. You cannot shift it. Uh, the thing that what that happens uh, when you change z, which is transmission coefficient, is that what you get, what is called subgap conductance. So here there is no tunneling, at, very big tunneling. You make tunneling stronger. You you start getting conductance uh, below the gap. Uh, and and then uh, it gets larger and at z equals zero, which actually you, you get to full transmission as a flat top. Uh, okay, so that was uh, 1D. Uh, now, uh, one can generalize 1D to a flat boundary, of course, because you can separate variables. Uh, and most interesting thing was uh, done by Tanaka in this respect. And this uh, uh, peak uh, for 110 phase uh, was actually obtained theoretically by him. Uh, uh, he capitalized on an earlier paper that discovered the mid gap surface state uh, in uh, D wave uh, uh, TRS preserving uh, superconductor by uh, uh, Chair and Hu. Uh, and uh, one thing that, you know, K parallel conservation is crucial for this path. And there is no way to generalize it uh, on uh, on a point like tunneling, except if it's a wave. Now I have to confess. <laughs> so uh, this building is worn, and that's because uh, it's here for a long time. Um, so there was a, a conference held here in 97, 25 years ago, actually. Uh, and uh, it turns out that I was one of the organizers. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, and actually, Tanaka was speaking uh, in this very room, uh, and I still remember this talk, not that I understood uh, uh, much of what he was telling, but um, uh, this uh, is written by uh, uh, Dan Ralph and uh, Vina M. Um and uh, they master language much better than me. Uh, so, uh, there was a wonderful personal, as I discovered yesterday, a personal reflection, uh, I think it's by Vinay, uh, about uh, the way to summarize the present status of theory. Uh, and then here you give the theory to students, uh, they solve some differential equations, and before long, they come back with the results. So, uh, which is perfect segue for me to uh, discuss past two. Uh, <laughs> so, one starts uh, with a tunnel Hamiltonian, and then just boldly using green functions, try to evaluate uh, conductance to all orders. Well, you may try to do it, and that was actually attempted by um, uh, in this paper. And it's it's non equilibrium nominally. It's, not, it's elastic scattering, but nominally it's non equilibrium. So it's Keldish and um, um, all the stuff with green functions. So in principle, you can express current in terms of the green functions and then uh, write uh, Dyson equation uh, with fairly simple 
self energy, but still this equation is not easy to solve. Uh, and then the result basically, if if you call it the result, here is it. Here it is. It's a one, a two, a three, a. Uh, still, we use somewhere this condition delta over ef, but not to the full glory of it. And then, and then what? Uh, <laughs> so you still have a parameter uh, t in front, and it enters in all these green functions. Okay. So, so in a way, you can put it on computer uh, and and to give it to another student, or you you try uh, to express things uh, so that they are cast back uh, in uh, terms of the conductance okay so you, you do the thing and then you pray uh, and uh, it actually turns out that the prayer was answered before the prayer itself uh, uh, so uh, here's the second part of this paragraph uh, and uh, it's unit popularizes it's not profits so uh, and actually, I don't think that this is an insult, uh, because if you don't understand the formula, uh, doesn't help much having it. Uh, so, um, so the way this, this answer to the prayers uh, basically was done in 90, around 92, uh, and uh, that was utilization to a better way, a better utilization of this Andre condition delta over f much less than one. So basically, you can imagine that. In terms of green functions, basically you have to do partial summations that would uh, cross over from the uh, from the potential of the barrier to the transmission amplitudes to scattering metrics, and that basically what the scattering formalism does uh, in abbreviated form. And uh, what you do is just uh, you tunnel the particle; it scatters off a superconductor, uh, acquiring some some phase and changing to a hole, and it can tunnel out uh, or uh, scatter again of the barrier. And then there is another process, and so on. And then you basically uh, sum uh, the uh, subsequent uh, Andreev reflections. Uh, and this summation is easily done; it's just a dramatical series. And uh, here is the result, and uh, it's already uh, a phenomenological form because everything here is transmission coefficient. Okay, so t squared and r squared is one minus t squared. That's it, right? So, and then basically using that you plug it into the DIDV, uh, which can be written uh, in this form. It's, it's actually a BTK form uh, that accounts for the particle reflection and hole reflection for the coming electrons. So there are two channels. You can refer to the particle as a hole, that's it. Uh, and um, basically the final result does have this form and it helps to navigate along the path two to the very same result. So in terms of S waves, I would say that's um, um, in my view ideal as long as uh, we keep uh, Andreev condition intact. Uh, so we, we tried to implement pass two actually. So, so we, we did this thing. We tried to implement pass two and not only giving it to postdoc, but also uh, trying ourselves and it was hopeless. So uh, uh, not the, like, for the lack of trying, you know. Um, uh, uh, so eventually uh, uh, it forced us to uh, uh, think and uh, uh, basically, uh, one can adapt uh, this Binnaker thing for the um, uh, for the STM configuration. Uh, so the difference is that here is that basically it's it's a funny uh, 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 single uh, mode uh, problem because uh, this uh, scattering uh, matrix element uh, S simultaneously uh, describes scattering of two D electrons uh, on a tip without going into a tip, but just backscattering. Okay, so. It's like if you look at the ellipsis, there is a section on inelastic scattering which people skip, but actually that's about that's exactly this section. So, uh, an electron that comes onto the tip, it may go into the tip, and this kind of inelastic process for from the point of view of 2D, or it may be just scattering. And if you have any transmission, it means also they have scattering, it's just unitarity. So, uh, so this is the thing that uh, basically uh, there is kind of a combination of two dimensional scattering problem and tunneling. Uh, and uh, one can inter uh, also account for the block functions uh, by generalizing S wave to a projection on the proper uh, um, on the proper uh, block function uh, uh, taken at point R zero, uh, and then uh, basically you do the same thing. Uh, you account for the uh, conversion of particle into hole, but now it's directional, okay? Because delta is a function of k, 
the scale, the scattering phase, backscattering phase, uh, or Andreas scattering phase depends on uh, on the wave vector. Uh, and uh, then basically one does the same thing uh, with summation. It is it's more mathematically involved, but still, uh, as long as it's a, a, a single channel or small number of channels, uh, it is a solution uh, of an integral equation with a separable kernel, which we know how to do. Uh, and skipping details, basically, uh, one can uh, generalize uh, this expression that was uh, in uh, the S wave uh, to what is shown here, uh, where S naught uh, is a scattering a matrix so it's it's a complex number mod less than one uh, and this a uh, are expressible in terms of the uh, of the um, uh, Andreev scattering amplitudes so uh, and one can do also for the uh, not only for the particle cold channel but also for the particle reflection uh, and get a scheme uh, it maybe it looks horrible but you should look at it as you know as a as a leg you can explain it to a kid so basically, there are two, well, three ingredients: scattering matrix, block function, uh, and um, uh, and gap, right? And out of the three blocks of Lego, you can construct an answer. So, uh, and the answer basically leads you all the way to uh, deriving the uh, DIDV. Uh, so, so once again, the ingredients here uh, is a block function uh, and uh, and gap that enters uh, into the Andreev amplitude. Uh, now, uh, uh, in the last kind of two, three minutes, I guess, right? 10 seconds, okay, plus two minutes. <laughs> uh, so, so now, uh, if, if one looks uh, at uh, conductance, uh, you, you can analyze quite, quite, a, quite a bit just looking uh, at various limits. So, uh, at, at zero bias and arbitrary transmission, uh, one has to analyze uh, uh, this expression. So, it's average over the Fermi surface of uh, uh, mod squared of block function times delta over mod delta. Uh, and assuming that there's only Kramers at given k, uh, uh, UK, is, UK is one dimensional rep, so mod UK squared is a, is a constant under uh, point group symmetry. Uh, now, uh, it's, it's very easy to show that actually delta uh, of k, as long as it preserves latest point group symmetry, then delta over mod delta uh, belongs to a uh, reducible representation and some sophistic generalization of it is in that paper. Uh, and uh, then the, the result is very simple. So uh, if uh, it's a S wave superconductivity trivial representation, then you have conventional Andre reflection uh, with uh, uh, twice uh, unit uh, uh, con conductance unit at zero bias. If it's non trivial, then you get zero Andre reflection at any reflection amplitude, at any S naught. Um, so basically, uh, uh, here is a graph. Uh, this is uh, 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 the case of uh, the trivial representation in those show, but if it's non trivial representation like D wave, uh, then uh, what one has is zero uh, V shape at, at zero bias, no matter what, at any transmission coefficient. One funny thing that actually the log divergence becomes a, a log suppression at a stronger tunneling. And it's basically for no resonance. Uh, now, if uh, you have non-trivial representation, but you break TRS, uh, then again, it's zero at zero bias, but uh, it's zero all the way to uh, the mod delta, the, to the mod, mod, mod delta. Now, uh, uh, if uh, the point symmetry, if, if delta breaks the point symmetry, uh, then things depend on whether uh, TRS is preserved or not. Uh, so left is an example where TRS uh, is preserved and the gap is real. Uh, and uh, for, in this example, nodeless. Uh, now, uh, this is an example of a point group uh, uh, symmetry breaking and TRS broken. And again, I'm talking about tunneling into a symmetric point. So there is no problem uh, with the block function symmetry. And that's actually this uh, two examples uh, is something related to this diagram to different phases. Now back to experiment and they're almost done. So uh, it is not clear to us uh, how to explain. We first thought uh, that, uh, you know, you can fine tune uh, the parameters uh, to mimic uh, the data at large conductance. But what Ali mentioned to us 
uh, is that the more plausible cause actually is that uh, the point contact regime stops somewhere uh, uh, along this line uh, because actually the uh, unit conductance, twice unit conductance is somewhere here. And uh, if you drive tip closer to the sample, basically uh, most probably you just, <laughs> you make a hole in the sample and the junction becomes large. It's not a single channel, it's just macroscopic. Again, I, that's the current state of affairs. I don't know whether it's correct or not. That's what we are discussing. So lastly, conclusions. So uh, I, I like the fact that we developed a flexible uh, scheme that is free of model parameters. Uh, basically you can uh, uh, describe um, the DIDV inspecting state through a minimal uh, knowledge of the normal state uh, properties. Uh, and um, we see that actually the reflection uh, provides uh, plenty of additional information about the order parameter symmetry in addition to the density of states which uh, we know and love uh, and big tunneling. And uh, there, are, there are extensions that we would like to pursue uh, to account for spin orbit coupling, additional structure, order parameter, which is actually important, uh, and um, the possibility of magnetic tips and effect of uh, potential scattering, magnetic scattering. I think I'll stop here, thanks. Yeah, it's, it's two minutes. Uh, Elian, so uh, for, for this final anti-resonance, it mm -hmm. goes to zero, of course, when it's a delta function. But if there is a relaxation there, it would be that energy relaxation or phase relaxation there. Yeah. Then that that's and in practice, particularly for the tip, it probably is there. So that's why yes, I yeah. think you don't see a, a, I, a real a real going to zero anti resonance. Absolutely, same, same happens in optics. I mean, that's exactly the same. I totally agree with you. And you know, after all, I mean, when even numerically we plotted it, like if singularity is very weak, so you really have to you know to go very close to see it. So anything will will plot it. You're right. Do you assume uh, in the calculation that the tunneling points is a high symmetry point? Yeah, okay, good. So, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, so, I advertise again <laughs> one more that uh, we don't assume. So, uh, for example, this expression, there, there is a block function at a tunneling point, okay, and it may be any point, it doesn't have to be high symmetry point. So, this expression actually allows one to see uh, the the effects of symmetry uh, of uh, the block functions uh, and delta separately. Uh, and actually, if you move away from a high symmetry point uh, uh, in the lattice, and uh, this guy doesn't have a symmetry with respect to K anymore, then the V shape, for example, may start not from zero, but from finite value. That's actually one of the possibilities uh, why, why people see uh, this shape not going all the way but to zero. You're saying the uh, Andrew reflection is still absent even when the tunneling point is. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry for talking. No, for Andrew reflection is absent if you're at high symmetry point. Uh, uh, I didn't try it. Okay, so I'm sorry. So if you're at high symmetry point and delta respects the symmetry of lattice but belongs to non trivial representation, then it's zero. Otherwise, it's not, and you, you go away from zero. So even for even for high TC, uh, if you tunnel not exactly into you know uh, copper atom, but but away, there is no guarantee that you have uh, V shape going all the way to zero. It's still V shape, but it starts from some pedestal. Thank you. Okay. A very naive question. Uh, in the even last data that you showed. Uh -huh. There is a symmetry between positive and negative EV. Yes. The peak seen on one side and essentially no peak and seen on the other side. Right. Is your theory completely symmetric with respect to sign change of V? In other words, can it be that the resonance is uh, killed on one side and not killed on the other yes, side? Yes, thanks. Again, it's naive question. That's again uh, very uh, close to my heart question. So uh, again, I'm not telling that the theory can describe the data, but it's not symmetric 
in uh, the sine of V under the following condition. You may have potential scattering. There is no need in any kind of magnetic scattering, potential scattering. Uh, but uh, for the range of biases uh, where uh, you are between the minimal and maximal value of the gap, uh, the asymmetry is present. Uh, and it's a weird effect of um, uh, interference between two different ways to go from a tip into a quasi particle state in a superconductor. You can do it directly uh, in some direction where you are above the gap, or you can do it via Andrea reflection uh, as an intermediate point into some other direction where you are below the gap. Okay, uh, you can just cook up a simple model and see how it works. And this interference actually gives you uh, this uh, asymmetry. The amazing thing, you know, is that the density of states per se doesn't change. If you look at this expression that I have shown in terms of denominators, uh, they're all perfectly particle hole symmetric. And uh, um, there is uh, nothing, you know, uh, there is no harbinger uh, of what will happen. So the denominator here uh, is you, you, particle symmetric. But the numerators, this interference affects its in the numerators. Thank. Uh, let me check. Question online. So let's thank Lenny. So the next. So we have a coffee break. Uh, what time should we meet? <laughs> So, so the third talk begins, starts at eleven fifteen. Okay, thank you. No, no, I took it more already. I think it's not But at the end of the day.